The city's skylines too. Fun continues with garbage performance, future DLC plans, and a banned radio ad. News TVs and clerks at Kirk the Jerk. Alongside discussion of future DLC plans, today we heard from Colossal Order a lot of interesting stuff and obviously some slightly spicy and controversial detail as well. My name is Jumbo Pixel. Please consider subscribing and joining us as we just surged across the 70,000 subscriber mark. Thank you so much. Let's jump in and take a look at Cities 2. They start by mentioning last week's patch. Now, I made a dedicated video about it already, so I'm not going to bore you to death with the detail here. However, it does provide some important context. So let me throw it up on your screen and you can take a look at some of the detail. Uh, largely, it focused not necessarily around performance, but around fixing things, fixing uh, leisure probabilities, companies going out of profit, what they do when they go out of business, and of course, more focus in and around, say, LODs, for example, that level of detail that's being rendered in your models at a distance, as well as various other bug fixes. Is the work done? Obviously not. Plenty more work to be done there, but nice to see another patch update. Maybe we'll get one a week at this rate. Back to today's update, though, it started with a point that was actually a little bit controversial. In the last patch, there was the removal of a radio ad after it was pointed out to them that it came off as offensive. Now, you could skip ahead through this section if you don't want to be offended, but if you do, then stick around. I'll quickly share some details. So the ad was for a company called Spaz Electronics, and it was pretty tongue-in-cheek, to say the least, obviously offensive to some. I uh, talked about sort of, you know, maybe slightly unusual things as well throughout language like uh, clerks that gurk the jerks or something like that. Um, at the end of the day, of course, Glossal Order have addressed it. It's probably best that I read more directly from what they've said rather than paraphrasing it here. And actually, maybe you could just take a quick listen. Again, uh, offensive content warning. I feel like I'm almost obliged to share that before sharing it. Here we go. Get y'all electronics down at Spaz Electronics. We got resistor, transistor, capacitor, all the calibers. LEDs, news TVs, and clerks that girk the jerks down at Spaz Electronics. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, from a business perspective, somebody's written this or commissioned this. They've listened to it. They've put it in the game. It surprises me that it wasn't picked up on by somebody at some point. Uh, either way, it is of course ultimately easy enough to just get rid of things that are offensive to a group of people, that are slandering a group of people, whatever it may be. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter if a radio ad is removed. Frankly, the radio can just be kind of annoying anyway, and that's my hot take on the radio. But back to the point, let's see what Colossal Order had to say about the removal. So note that they were surprised by the tone of the discussion, saying that the best part of City Skyline's community is how helpful it is and how kind it is, each member kind to one another, and they want to see that continue in two. They'd like everyone to keep in mind that when you join community discussions, you should behave that way, and they'd urge everyone to leave constructive criticism, and remember that if there's an issue with the game, it's not appropriate to attack a fellow community member or single out an individual developer or partner. They're reading all of the feedback, passing it on to the dev team. They say you can be a part of a positive community if you so choose. And I think that on one level, obviously there's a really valid message here, a message around not attacking individual people. We don't really need to stoop to that level. If you're frustrated about a game, you ultimately you can refund it. It will be updated. On the other hand, it doesn't really feel particularly nice to be lectured to either, right? I've just done it to you. So now you've been lectured at twice about being kind to people. Apologies. But no, and actually bringing it back to the core point here, there could be again some pushback against this. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a stones and glass houses irony about creating an ad that's offensive to people and then telling people to be kind to one another or you just don't like being told what to do. Uh, so I think that probably the controversy around this will likely just die away now. The radio ad has been removed from the game. Uh, it's probably not a big issue for the majority of the population. And now we can move back to talking about the real things that matter to City Skylines too. 
And in what could perhaps be considered an appropriate move for Cities 2, they're really digging into the trash. Like the feature in the game had some bugs that affect the balance in an unwanted way. Like most bugs do. Uh, three things that they noted. There's a collection bug that causes garbage trucks to disappear. Garbage accumulates too little. And city service buildings that process garbage are out of balance. And garbage city service buildings, so there's ones that process it, are just placed. And then they get their storages filled with garbage, seemingly out of nowhere, which then prevents them from collecting more. So, garbage, rubbish, bit of a problem, cities too. They then move on to say, after talking about how they've identified them, now that these bugs are fixed, we can look into balance of the feature as the processing buildings don't go through the garbage quickly enough and it causes issues with exporting. And they say, basically in a nutshell, if you're exporting your garbage, you will have more traffic and that will make people upset. So if you can, it's better to process rubbish domestically or, or, or inside of your city. Another issue that's been doing the rounds a little bit and really desperate for a feed, stray dogs. They say that in the next patch, the amount of stray dogs is fixed so that we don't end up with an insane number of abandoned packs. I assume the word fixed here means fixed to a certain number, i.e. you can't have more than 50 dogs. But it could also mean that they've just fixed the bug and now the bug around them is gone. Not quite sure. Either way, uh, they make a bit of a joke about families and then say that plans to fix the issue caused immediate debate if we should turn this bug into a feature. Uh, they go on to say that they'd welcome the idea of an animal shelter DLC with a bunch of policies and all sorts of animals needing rescue in the city. The topic of future DLC might not quite be so palatable with a portion of the audience who have potentially bought this game and discovered that it really doesn't run anywhere near as well as even comparable titles. And fair enough too. And they can probably pick up on that a little bit. They are clearly very active in the discussion, obviously very active around the development of it and with the community. So credit to them for doing that and to continue to do that, even though it might be a bit up against them sometimes. And so perhaps detecting some animosity or potential animosity, they address it head on in the following paragraph. Should have put it first. Uh, while on the topic of DLCs, they say, we will not release new paid content for City Skylines 2 before the outstanding performance issues are fixed to our standards. Uh, a reminder that their standards is uh, a 30 frames per second for a simulation game arguing it doesn't need a higher refresh rate than that because it's not a fast shooter. Uh, they say, as a small team, we must focus on the task at hand to avoid spreading too thin. We're also very much looking forward to starting to go through your suggestions for Cities 2, adding quality of life improvements familiar from the predecessor that were missed in the sequel due to, quote, priorities and time constraints. Um, so obviously that's a nice message to hear. Hey, everybody, we're going to fix the game and make it run before we sell you more things for it. I mean, it, it makes sense. You, you'd be really foolish to isolate a portion of your community like that. So that's good to see. Uh, on the other hand, you know, again here, maybe opened themselves up for a bit of criticism around saying that there were things in Cities 1 that they couldn't fit in 2 because of time constraints. You know, obviously we don't need to get into the, the weeds here and the detail of having lots of moving parts, having a business, shareholders, publishers, all kinds of interests and expectations feeding into a delivery point. I don't envy them at all for that. However, using the time constraints thing as kind of a, we miss them because we didn't have time, may not actually sit that well with a bunch of people who again will feel like, well, you should have just made more time. And finally, they end with a pledge and a note to the future. They say that Colossal Order will keep working on City Skylines 2, so it will reach its full potential. And that is a pledge and a half. It will. Uh, they then go on to say that to reach that potential, they'll need to talk about modding, and we'll hear more about City Skylines beta editor and other details next week, around maybe this time next week. Thank you so much for joining me today in what has been, on one level, a controversial and kind of spicy update. And yet I can't help but feel on another level, not a lot of substance to bite my teeth into. Really. Uh, an ad was removed. 
The number of stray dogs is going down. They're not going to produce paid DLC, they say, until City Skylines 2 has its outstanding performance issues fixed and to their standards. And of course, right at the beginning, we talked a bit about trash. Thank you for joining me today, everybody. I'll see you next time. So, what are we talking about? Well, quite aptly, we're talking about rubbish. Trash, or garbage. Uh, this week, we're really digging into it, they say. <laughs> Looking, uh... <laughs> Ironic. Uh, I can't, no.